Stream processing with Kafka and Spark is really, really cool, but a lot of people struggle with this, especially from the debugging side. So I have created for you a playground where you can actually play around and experience what it is, where the problems are. And let me show you this. And for that, we are going to go into the recording studio and there I have the playground. So let's quickly take a look at this. So I have created this playground for you, a streaming demo app, and you can access that through going to learndataengineering.com and then scrolling down here. And here I have the free educational playgrounds that leads you to the other apps. I'm going to show them to you next time, but now we're going to go on the streaming part. And the idea with this, what I wanted to create is that you have a producer, a broker, a Spark processor, basically Spark and a database sync. Now, what you can do here, you can basically say how many messages is the producer actually creating. And you can see that here below, you see Kafka cluster, how many brokers you have, how many percent is used, the Spark cluster, how many executors you have, how many percent of resources are used. And here you can actually switch a database. And this way you can play around with this. I know this is not perfect right now. This is just a demo and I'm going to develop this further. If you like this, so comment below if this helps. It has a few issues. I'm going to come to them in a second. But the cool thing is now here as an example, when you have a message rate of 17,000 messages, you see this in the producer, right? The producer has 17,000 messages per second as the goal. Kafka broker has zero lag. So when you go into the console or when you have a tool, you will see zero messages lag. You have the Spark processor and that says 17,000 messages per second processed. And also on the database sync, I mean, you, when you do a query and do a count, you see the messages over time are there. So everything is right. Everything is working. Now I made it that Postgres here. This caps out at some level. But you can now increase this. And at some point here, the database thing is going to struggle, right? And then you're going to see, okay, the Spark processor now has 13,500. The target is 27, right? And then you see in the Kafka broker a lag coming. So when you look, then you know, oh, okay, something is wrong. You see the lag, you see the messages processed by the Spark processor. You're also going to see the duration time of your batches is going to go up because the database is struggling. And this way you see, okay, where does the error come from? And then you can increase this, right? You can develop or bring in more messages. And at some point I made it that our database is actually stalling so that our sync here gets overpowered. And then we see, okay, we now we have a lag over the whole thing. The producer still produces messages, but you can see that the time here, the batch duration goes up for the Spark processor because it takes longer to write data into the database. And at some point this is going to stall. Let's just make sure we get all the data through right here. Now this is stalled. We see here zero messages are going to pro be processed with Spark. We have a lot of missing data here in our database sync and Kafka producer lag. -like, actually, this will grow, right? This will go up over time because we are going to see that nothing happens. We also see here a batch duration, duration of 30 seconds, which means the jobs are timing out. Right? Now, I made it that when you switch to Postgres, this actually sets the sync to always scale and to always be fine. And then we can say, okay, now we go up, we go and produce more messages. At some point, let's just, let's just use here Kafka. So let's go Kafka down. So we're bringing here Kafka then gets into saturation here with 100. And then you see, okay, now the batch duration goes up. We're having messages that are missing. There are less messages processed. There are, is a Kafka producer uh, consumer lag coming. And this way you can basically experience this. You can, you can also go and say, okay, let's make this scale. Let's figure out the broker. What happens when the broker doesn't come or doesn't, uh, doesn't have enough resources, right? At some point there's still, everything is okay. We know, we see 
uh, we have no lag, the messages are processed, data is all there. And then when this goes into saturation, because 100% is used, we see actually that the processor is going to still process like 46, 43,000 messages and the actual send will go down, right? This will go down. Now the problem here, and this is one of the things that are not right, is we're not going to see a Kafka, like a, a consumer lag here because it doesn't receive all the data. Right? But this way you can look at this, you can work on scaling and what does happen when you change certain variables here, when you change the data that is going through and you can see how this system is reacting. Yeah, I think this will help you a lot regarding the Kafka and Spark streaming topic and looking at the different variables. And yeah, I hope you have fun with this. I hope you like this playground. Let me know again in the comments what you think, if you find some problems, what needs improvement. And then I'm going to develop this further. Otherwise, this is going to stay that way right now. But I think it will help people. And it's also fun creating these small apps. Now, uh, while I'm on that topic of streaming, tomorrow we actually have a live stream regarding Kafka streaming. Check this out. Here tomorrow I have a stream, the future of streaming with Drew from Lenses.io. And we're going to look into Kafka replication, querying data directly from Kafka, debugging data or debugging Kafka and creating streaming pipeline. So check this out. I'm going to leave the link below as well. And it's, I think it's going to be interesting even if you're still watching this on the recording. So have fun and see you next time.